a lot over the course of Marcus's career has been made about what a poor shooter he is, but he always seems to hit him late. Uh, just what did you see of that in him tonight? I mean, I think we talked about it Monday. You know, we can we can talk about his shooting all year long, but you know when it's in a big moment, that kid's going to rise to the occasion. He just always has. Um, and, um, you know, that's one of the reasons why, you know, if he goes through a funk at some time in March, shoot yourself out of it, and we believe in you, and let it fly because in this moment, you know, when we needed him the most, um, he made huge shots. He was terrific tonight. Adam Hemel, five Boston Globe. You've talked about it before Bob, with this team, but in this case, you know, the way the first two games went, not having Isaiah down 21 with six minutes left in the third, what, uh, I guess what did you kind of see from on the bench? What was the, the mood, and how do they kind of stay so resilient when there was every reason to not be? Well, when we won here last year, we were down big. When we had a chance to win earlier this year, we were down big. So, you know, we've been in that situation before, but um, we were playing way better, Adam. You know, I don't know how to phrase it other than that. We were playing way better. We were getting good shots on offense and playing with great purpose. Um, and on defense, I thought we were much better than, their, than the score indicated. So I think that when you play better, you feel better, and you just kind of stay the course. Did you get a sense the guys realized that and felt that as you know as you're down 21 with? Well, I know points? they don't listen to very much that I say, but I tried to say it as much as possible. So um, because I felt that way, I mean, I felt I felt like by it was by far the best first half we played, and you know it could have easily been a four point game instead of a 16 point game. Ray Jasky from ESPN 990. Uh, after the disaster of just 48 hours ago, where everything seemed to go wrong and they lose Isaiah, how'd you get your guys to come here and play like this? Play this hard, like you're saying in the first half. Play like it mattered. Play like they cared. How, because it could have been easy to pack it up and, and, and quit. Yeah, they didn't. How'd, they get, how'd you get them to come in not, like that? It's not who we have in our locker room. Um, we've got guys that have chips on their shoulders. We've got guys that have you know, a lot of these guys have been overlooked, and this is their first opportunity to really play a meaningful role. And as they've continued to play it, play it better and better and better, um, they've just risen in their games and our team. Um, and uh, and so, you know, we knew that Friday was a 46-point disaster, worth one. And it wasn't worth all four. It was worth one. So we got back together. Yesterday was a little bit tough. Um, today we had our spirit back. Shoot around was great. And what did you do defensively against LeBron? Well, first of all, I think there's only so much you can do. We just tried to be as solid as possible. Um, we tried to switch a little bit less, um, you know. And um, and you know, I think our you know we have a couple of guards out there that are bigger guards. Um, and we just tried to rotate bodies on him. We were lucky that Jay Crowder, Jay Crowder picked up his fourth, I think, in the third. Um, and, you know, the threat of not having him out there is, is scary. He picked up his third middle of the first, I think, middle of the first half. So we were glad that he was able to finish. Hi, Brad. This is Julian from the Globe. Uh, just piggybacking on the – Defending LeBron question, uh, you threw a lot of different options at him, and Jonas said you guys made an adjustment late. Uh, was that it, finding the guards to to defend them? Or, well, I mean, we have all. I mean, we've gone every which way on that guy. You know, you, right when you think you figure something out, he just kills you. So, um, you know, I don't want to act like we've figured anything out. Uh, one last one with LeBron. This, it seemed like the second half he just wasn't his normal aggressive self that we've seen in this. I mean, he hasn't even scored less than 30 points in any game this postseason. You guys held him to 11. Was there something maybe about his, his mood or his aggressiveness that was different in the second half than you've seen the rest of the series? He's such an unselfish player. He made so many great plays. Some of the people talk about that led to extra passes, some that led to assists. He's the best player in the world. I'm not going to criticize him one bit. I mean, I don't know what to say other than I mean, he's a handful. 
Coach Mark D'Amico, Celtics.com. 10.7 seconds left, tie game. You call timeout. Um, obviously, we know what happened, but what, can you just walk us through what you drew up for the team um, and what were you were thinking when that ball was bouncing on the rim before it fell through? Thank God it's bouncing on the rim because that's taking time. <laughs> you know, if it goes in or doesn't go in, they have a timeout left. And we didn't want to go. We wanted to go at six seconds. Um, and the hope was that they'd have less than one if they did get it, the ball. So when it bounced around, I was actually hoping it went in, obviously, but not completely disappointed that it was bouncing up there. And Avery was the primary option? Brad, Steve Belpet, Boston Herald. You, first couple of games, you said that uh, when things weren't going right, you guys seemed to get down, seemed to deflate a little bit. Marcus seems to get the opposite attitude when those situations arise. How did that affect how you were able to come back tonight, just him getting angry? Seemed. Yeah, I don't know if it was angry. I thought he was really purposeful all night. He's competitive, um, spirited, but played with good poise. Um, again, I, I credit uh, he was tremendous, um, and I thought our other starters played really, really hard. You know, I thought Avery um, didn't have a great shooting night, but he played played as hard as he could on the other end of the floor. And Jay Crowder, I mean, guarding LeBron is a is a handful. And then Al had his moments, especially in the fourth quarter. He made big plays for us. But Marcus just kind of led us. And, just and, and um, you know, one of the things about Marcus is he's going to play regardless of the score. Like uh, you, you mentioned, I mean, he's going to compete. And sometimes he'll he'll try to hit home runs because that's and, – and, and then we talk about those after the game and we always say, and it's true, it's those are his greatest strengths. Like he is a true competitor. There's, um, he's a tough guy. He's a tough guy. But the other one that we haven't talked about. I mean, I just thought Jarebko was huge. And this whole postseason for us has been built on the next guy that hasn't played that much, being ready, and kind of helping take the whole team to a new level. Jared Way, CLNS Media. So I was going to ask about Jonas. He came in middle of the third quarter and the 21-point deficit erased pretty quickly. What did he do to really unlock the side-to-side -side movement for you on offense? Well, I thought it was that. But it was also, obviously, he's a spacer. So being able to kick out and knock down those shots, he got the tip in. Um, but more important than that was the energy on defense. He blocked a shot, got a couple of rebounds, kept balls alive. Like um, We just needed just a little jolt. Um, and... Uh, you know, I, th I do think, like, there's sometimes guys that haven't played quite as much, there's a real energy and desire um, to go out and, and put it all out there. And sometimes you get gassed early. But he's done a good job of staying in shape and, um, and staying the course. I mean, I mean, without Gerald, we don't win the Chicago series. You know, without some of our bench play in Washington, we don't win. And then, you know, Jonas tonight was a huge reason why we won. Brad, Gary Walsh from Boston Globe. I mean, they had 14 threes in the first half. The second half, Tristan Thompson just kind of dominates the offensive boards. The free throw disparity, you had a lot of things go against you. When you win, it's usually Isaiah and hitting a lot of threes. But tonight, it seemed to be different. I mean, how did you keep the guys from getting discouraged? And can you describe your personal emotions, although you don't show any visibly, when Avery shot went in? Yeah, I mean, First thing I'm thinking about is, are they going to call a timeout? If not, get back, get set. And then when you see it's point one, you know, there's not much you can do at point one. Um, so you think about that first. And then, sure, you know, you get excited with the guys in the locker room. But, um, you know, again, I would have just preferred that ball to bounce just a little longer and just end it. But, um, you know, the first part of your question, we hit more threes than they did. It's a long game. We hit 18. Um, you know, these guys are tremendous players, and, and so tremendous players hit tremendous shots. But the first half was kind of like game two. It was like, oh, my gosh, like this is a little bit unbelievable. It's like a video game, what's going on. Um, and so, you know, maybe the law of averages worked in our favor a little bit. Thanks. <laughs>